station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I'm ready for the event. European Space Agency and participants, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. This is ESA calling station. Are you ready for the call? ESA, this is station. I'm ready for the event. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. So hello, Samantha. Very nice uh, to see you. We just uh, met uh, about a month ago when you were launched uh, into space, one day after your birthday, which was a very special moment. Uh, very happy to see you up there. You look very good and in very good shape, and I see you all smiles. Uh, I'm calling here from Davos, from the World Economic Forum, and uh, this is uh, a very special event down here on Earth, but you will tell us in a minute uh, how it is up there in space. So I'm, hand I'm handing over to Andrew. Andrew is the moderator of this session, and uh, he will now uh, moderate uh, this part. Hi, Samantha. It's great to see you. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to give it a little bit of time between, between questions. We've been having a conversation uh, down here on Earth about actually a lot of the things that are happening uh, on Earth as it happens. And I wanted to understand from your perspective, in terms of your space exploration and your own research, how important the future cooperation is uh, between Russia and all of the various, what we might describe as space economies are right now? Yes, hello. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here to uh, hear the voice of our Director General, and uh, I'm very happy to, about this uh, conversation we are about to have with you, Andrew. Um, and to answer your question, well, the short answer is it's, uh, it's quite important, I would say. Uh, I think that the International Space Station, where I have the pleasure and the privilege of being right now, is a testament uh, to international cooperation. And uh, certainly, uh, Russia is an important partner in, uh, in this endeavor. Uh, but just in, you know, and, and, and the space station, just to clarify, is really an integrated facility where um, components of provided by different countries and different agencies are integrated together and really can function only as a whole. Um, and that include the Russian segment, the USS segment, uh, and also this uh, uh, piece of Europe up here in space, which is the Columbus uh, Laboratory. Uh, so, but in, in general, uh, space exploration is indeed, uh, I think, an, an area of human endeavors in which uh, international cooperation has proven key uh, to achieve uh, success, and the ISS is really a testament to that. Um, maybe this is going to be a personal question, but uh, there are Russian cosmonauts uh, on board with you. Uh, how is it working with them? Uh, do you discuss what's happening uh, in Ukraine and what's happening on the ground? You know, I think that on a on a personal level, we are we, you know we are all uh, uh, saddened and devastated by uh, the events uh, ongoing and the current conflict, and 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 that's a fact. Um, but at the same time, in terms of our relationships here on board, I think what prevails and and um, informs our relations and our work together on a daily basis is on a personal level our personal friendship to our, our colleagues whom we have known for quite quite a long time uh, and on a professional level our, our common commitment to the success of the mission and to continuing all the amazing work of science and technological advancement that we uh, perform on a daily basis here on the International Space Station, which again is a product of integrated work of many international partners. Um, I was going to ask you, given the challenges that we're, we're clearly facing about inequality and climate change, and we talked about that a little bit down here before we got to you, can you tell everybody about the purpose of your mission and how, how you would tell everybody on Earth uh, how you think it's going to ultimately help resolve some of these issues? Yeah, I, I think that global big challenges like uh, obviously climate change and inequality uh, have are best faced when societies have at their disposals powerful tools and those tools are 
knowledge, technologies, and general, uh, uh, you know, strong economies. And so I think that there's two ways of answering your questions. I mean, of course, I could go and go off and tell you about all the space-based assets that monitor the Earth on a daily basis. And some appear by the, some of those are, are free-flying satellites, but some of those are here installed on the external platforms of the International Space Station because they benefit from the fact that they have this platform and all the power that is available and, you know, the data transfer. Um, and so, and, and, you know, and, and that it was possible to install them here. So I, I could go off and tell you that, but I, I think that one should also have a more holistic perspective and understand that space is really part of our lives, of our technological development, of our scientific advancements, ultimative, ultimately of our um, you know, economic resources and the technological and scientific resources that we overall have at our disposal to tackle challenges, especially like, like climate change. So as we develop space capabilities and the space economy, that becomes a multiplier of all the technological tools that we have at our disposals to tackle climate change and, you know, all the great challenges that face humanity. Um, when do you think, you know, we are in this, this new era of space exploration and there are billions of dollars pouring into it in, in, from the private sector. What do you think of that and what do you think of what the private companies uh, can and, and will do up there? Yeah, I think that that is a, a very exciting and positive development. I think that a, uh, a cooperation between the private and the and the public sector uh, is going to bring us a lot of benefits. I think that the private sector, when it comes in, it probably brings um, an, an agility, uh, an ability to innovate, uh, you know, competition, the, the power of the, of the market economy when it's brought upon the space business is, uh, is bound to, you know, be partially disrupt it, but certainly help uh, develop it. Uh, make it more resilient, make it more affordable from an economic point of view, so that, again, as I mentioned earlier, all these space capabilities can really be leveraged from many, many uh, diverse um, industrial, societal, economic uh, sectors. And, you know, space is not this thing out there doing things on its own, but it's integrated in the web of society and, uh, and economy. So this is, I think, the benefit that bringing in a lot of commercial actors will bring. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm here in Columbus, the European Laboratory on Board. Externally to Columbus, we have an external platform, which is an example of this uh, uh, public-private partnership, which is uh, Columbus. In the rack right next to me, there is another example, which is the Ice Cubes uh, uh, research facilities. So, you know, also in Europe, there is, uh, um, you know, some of, of that um, private-public partnership already ongoing, and we're certainly striving to get that more and more. I want to turn the interview personal for a second. This is your second time up there. I've never, by the way, interviewed an astronaut in space uh, before. <laughs> so I want to know what it's been like and what's it like the second time? You know, there's always conversations here about coming to Davos your first time and what it's like the second time. <laughs> uh, what's it like the second time up there? Is it different? Have you, did you bring different things with you? Are you getting better sleep? What, what is it? How, just tell us about what, what the experience is like. Uh, the second time is very different, uh, not worse or better, but uh, different. I would say that the first time I came um, to Space Station as a rookie, it was quite overwhelming, uh, you know, all the way from, from launch. Uh, it, it was this influx of, of new experiences, new physical sensations, new skills that I had to learn, you know, like, like floating in, in zero G uh, and handling this uh, rather complex environment of, uh, of Space Station and handling the work up there or up here. Um, and and I, I think um, if I looked back at those, especially those first days and weeks, it was all a little bit of a blur. I didn't have very clear memories. And so I was really looking forward to come up here a second time as a veteran astronaut this time and have a little bit more of both cognitive and emotional buffer to experience this a little bit more in slow motion. And it's definitely been the case. I mean, you know, the, I didn't have to learn everything from scratch. It came, it came back to me fairly quickly, like riding a bicycle, I guess. Uh, and so I, I had that space in, you know, in, in, in my heart and in my mind to um, observe the experience and, and really take note of details and, and hopefully also remember it better uh, for, for the future. What's the most exciting thing you're working on up there right now? 
Well, this weekend we had uh, quite an excited event. We actually had a brand new um, a space vehicle. It's called uh, Starliner. Uh, that uh, so the prototype, the, uh, the demonstration flight uh, occurred this weekend. So uh, the vehicle came knocking at our door um, in the night between Friday and Saturday, I believe. And uh, we had a pretty intense, uh, short uh, docked mission in which it uh, demonstrated a number of uh, of capabilities. And then we uh, closed the hatch uh, uh, last night, and it will undock. And, and of course, we are uh, we are all uh, confident that we will safely land to Earth uh, uh, shortly after that. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, the, there's always a lot of uh, science on board. It's always difficult to pick a favorite, but I will let just uh, proximity choose for me, like what you maybe can glance here in the camera uh, that I'm not supposed to touch, that I set up yesterday is a, a, a facility to demonstrate uh, tele-robotic operations. So once we are uh, ready to do the, the, the demonstration operations, I will actually use this, uh, um, it, it's like a, a haptic controller, so I will hold it in my hand and kind of move my hand, but actually on the ground, I will be moving remotely the hand of a robot to perform tasks uh, um, remotely. So that, that's pretty exciting. That's uh, stuff that is, uh, is going to be useful for future um, surface explorations of, of Moon and, and hopefully one day of Mars. Um, and I don't know if this audience knows this, and this is so cool, I think. Uh, she has been a great champion of women and uh, space engineers and uh, Mattel, the toy maker, has made and commissioned uh, a Barbie doll of Samantha. <laughs> and I just thought maybe you could tell us about that, how it came about. I don't know if you have one up there with you, um, but it, it, it sounds like a fact. How did that happen? Yeah, um, they have this uh, campaign, which I believe is like the Dream Gap campaign, and uh, the idea is to uh, provide young girls, really, you know, especially starting at a young age, like preschool age, with uh, role models uh, so that, you know, they don't, they keep dreaming big. Uh, they do not start to think already like in preschool age that some professions are maybe not suitable for them, some career paths, some, uh, you know, some disciplines that they can study um, in college, for example, are not suited for them. Yeah, that, that's what we want to prevent. You know, when I encourage women to, you know, to, to, to consider STEM careers or consider working in the space sector, I don't necessarily have an end state in mind because, I mean, it, it depends in the end on individual choices and individual freedom, which for me is sacred. But what I, I hope to help accomplish is that, you know, young, you know, girls and, and women feel that freedom. They, you know, they, they, they make those choices knowing that they are free to choose from, you know, the full palette of, of human enterprises. Uh, Samantha, you're an inspiration. Uh, we are, I'm super grateful uh, to have this conversation with you. We want to thank you for joining the World Economic Forum in Davos from space. Um, and we want to thank you. Um, I hope we get to do this again and talk to you uh, very, very soon. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll call into a Zoom together at some point. I don't, what time is it there for you? Do you have to go to bed? I don't know, I don't know if it's the morning or night. Uh, it's about 10 to 3, so we should just uh, be a couple of hours behind. So it's, uh, it's been such a pleasure talking to you, Andrew, and uh, to you, DG, and to everybody in, uh, in Davos. I, I thank you for your interest and for visiting me up here on the International Space Station. Bye. Great. Thank you so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants from ESA. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.